Social expectation drowns us all inside. What you have should be what I want, 'cause what I have just ain't alright. The clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair, how I live, oh I don't care. Al Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, al Nabi al Ummi, wa ala alihi wa sallam taslima. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عدد ما في علم الله صلاة دائمة بدوام ملك الله ويلكم عيني نسيولة عيني كم بق إن شاء الله اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين استفى اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما مولا يا صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير القلق كلهم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على رسولك سيدنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا زدنا علما اللهم آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اشرح لنا صدورنا ويسر لنا أمورنا أما بعد the third chapter is on إخلاص a class, which is the what? Fifth quality. A class. So when you're speaking now, sometimes you're speaking, you don't, you don't have to speak on the whole six points. You could take one point sometimes. So next time you speak, now speak on this one, a class. And reproduce this, inshallah, as much of it as possible. Amal upon it. The third chapter is on a class. The deeds of the servants. The deeds of the servants are the external forms, while a class is the soul, is the ruh of the deeds. The deeds of the servants are the external forms, while the a class is the soul, the ruh of the deeds. So, if you have a body and you have no soul and the body is dead, the a class is the ruh. The righteous deeds of the banda, of the servant of Allah. Example: salat, saum, hajj, zakat, etc. Devoid of a class, are like a dead body, dead body without any soul, no ruh. A class that is the opposite of riya, riya is show. A class. The opposite of riya and nafs and nafsani desire, and their elimination from an action is like the ruh and the life the, so a class, the opposite of riya and nafs and nafsani desire. A class together with the elimination from all these things is like the ruh and the life. If the action is accompanied, if the action, the amal is accompanied by a class, it will have life in it, jan. On the contrary, if the amal, the action is devoid of a class and is rendered to show others or to derive personal pleasure, personal pleasure it will be like a lifeless body without benefit in the akira so not only doing things to show others sometimes we do things for our own selves to derive personal dhati pleasure from it this is also negative to ikhlas when we do things like that our amal will be like a lifeless body without any benefit in the Akira. 
สุดมัตันอิตมามุนิยม during the spiritual sojourn the spiritual path the journey suluk during that at the time of the revelation that is at the time of kashf opening up of ma'arif and mysteries because sometimes these things happen on the path allah blesses a person with kashf the revelation of ma'arif and mysteries and manifestation of celestial illumination the manifestation of anwar and nur the salik intention when these things happen if they do happen the salik is one who traverses the path of suluk he is called a salik the salik intention is not to halt it's not to stop here not to halt many a time a lot of salikin they halt at this stage and they feel well wow we have reached the salik intention is not to halt the reality haqiqatul amr the reality calls out to him haqiqatul amr calls out to him your goal lies ahead do not halt here your goal lies ahead the external beauty of worldly things is revealed and it attracts the salik because he's not immune it attracts the salik but the realities the realities of these things haqiqatul amr loudly proclaim we are a fitna we are a trial do not be ungrateful by indulging in us when the servants of allah while traversing the spiritual sojourn path engages in zikr this is the commentary when he engages in zikr fikr and muraqaba and numerous kinds of mysteries and realities cascade on their hearts then on account of the spiritual joy and pleasure and ecstasy they experience they engross themselves in these states thinking that this this is the goal this is the maqsood of suluk whereas this is not so divine guidance tawfiq ilahi and the kamil murshid's shadow the shadow of the kamil murshid are at hand are at hand to guide the salik on towards the goal of the divine pleasure which shows the importance of having the duas of our kabir our mashayikh to guide the salik towards the goal what is maqsood of the divine pleasure it is inspired by way of ilham into his heart your goal is ahead don't halt here don't stop here advance advance continue these conditions and states which you are experiencing you know what they are creations like yourself they are also creations all these ahwal conditions and states which you are experiences are also part of kalkan makhluk they are creations like yourself they are not the creator your goal lies ahead your goal is khaliq your goal is allah taala the khaliq not the makhluk similarly the external beauty of worldly objects by being revealed to the salik the external beauty attracts attracts him to them that is to worldly objects if deviation has been decreed for him ma'azallah or if he lacks the company and the suhba and the duas of a kamil sheikh and murshid he becomes entrapped in these worldly objects hence the importance of the sheikh he becomes entrapped 
in these worldly objects. He regards these worldly allurements as the medium. He thinks these are the medium for the attainment of his goal and he becomes entrapped. If divine guidance, tawfiq from Allah, tawfiq ilahi, if it comes to aid, then the reality of the objects of this transitory world become manifest to him. And they, the hidden realities of worldly objects, haqiqatul amr, the hidden realities of worldly objects, loudly call out to him. But this only happens when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks favorably towards a person and tawfiq from Allah comes to the rescue. Then the reality of the objects that were attracting him and see, being so glamorous become manifest to him. And they, the hidden realities of the worldly objects, then loudly call out to him, We have been created by Allah. We have been created by Allah Ta'ala as a trial for you, as a test for you. Do not be ungrateful to your creator, to the khaliq. We are makhluk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not be grateful to him by engrossing yourself in us. Don't stop here. We are all part of makhluk. Proceed ahead of us. Go on. Go on. Matan. Do not intend to travel from one makhluk to another makhluk. This is so deep. Sometimes a person says, you know what? I'll give up this. I love this so much. I love to do this. So I love that, which is makhluk. He gives it up, but he goes to another makhluk. Do not intend to travel and to journey from one makhluk, from one creation, to another creation. For then you will become like the ass operating the grinding stone. Ever see the ass operating the grinding stone? It goes in circles. If you do that, you become like this himar operating the grinding stone. The point which is the beginning of its sojourn journey will also be the end of its journey. The point which is the beginning and the ibtida of the suluk, the part of suluk, will also be the end of its journey. Rather, rather, travel. Travel from makhlukat. Journey from makhlukat. Created objects journey from these things straight on to the colic and the creator. Allah Ta'ala says, Undoubtedly, the end is your rub, meaning, undoubtedly, the end of the journey, the end of suluk is what is your rub. The maqsude asli, the true goal. Of the searcher of Allah, of the Salik, is Allah, nothing else. His gaze must be focused on his master in every single thing. His gaze must be focused on his master. The purpose of all acts of ibadah, the purpose of all acts of ibadah, dhikr. Shugo is, this is the purpose, the diversion of the Salik's gaze from all things besides Allah so that the heart becomes absorbed in the remembrance of Allah and diverted from everything else which is Gairullah. Thus, if a man of the world abandons the world, he abandons the world, engrossing himself in ibadat, dhikr, shugl, to convey to others, and he does this just to convey to others, 
that he's a man of piety. He's a man of piety. He does his things to convey to others that he is a saint. He is a wali. So he has left out so many things. Such mujahada, such effort. And he has abandoned the world. But his object is to convey to others that he is a man of taqwa. He is a saint. He is a wali. He has in fact abandoned one object of creation to involve himself in another object of creation. He ran away from one makluk to another makluk. In other words, he abandoned wealth. Yes, he gave up wealth. He left out wealth, the love of it. He abandoned wealth for the sake of name and fame. It is clear that those whose acclaim he seeks it is clear that those whose acclaim and credit and praise he seeks are all creations. They are all creations. If the Salik's goal, if his maqsood, if his goal is thawab and blessings, lofty ranks, and acquisition of spiritual pleasure, then although these are lawful, it does not behove the, search, the searcher of Allah to hanker even after these. Understand this carefully. If the Salik's goal, if his maqsood, is to get thawab, blessings, blessings, to obtain lofty ranks and acquisition of spiritual joy and pleasure, then although these are halal, although these are lawful, it does not behove the searcher of Allah to hanker after these, this too, even this too, is a journey from one creation that is abandoning the world. Even this too is a journey from that one creation to another creation, namely reward and lofty ranks. The journey of even this Salik is not towards Allah Ta'ala. He remains stagnated and he will not go forward. He remains stagnated to the point from whence he commenced his journey because thawab, lofty ranks, and fame are all common in being entities other than Allah Ta'ala. Such as Salik, such as Salik is like the ass driving the mill that in that he walks in a circle he walks in a circle he does not traverse any distance at all he does not traverse any distance similarly is the salik who abandons one object of creation for another he remains in the circle he remains in the circle of creation without covering even a cubit, even one vira in distance towards the colic, but he is like, unfortunately, the ass operating the grinding stone. He doesn't cover no distance at all. The salik should therefore abandon all creation. Whether it be the world, abandon it. Thawab, abandon it. Or some lofty spiritual rank, abandon it. He should leave them all leave them all behind and travel towards his master Allah Ta'ala Allah says undoubtedly the end that is of the journey is until your rub therefore act according to the exhortation of this ayah and fix fix the Maliki Hakiki the true master fix him as your final goal color yourself with this hue and the shade of coloring. Matan text. Keeping in mind the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, namely, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى دُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَتَزَوَّجُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ 
He whose hijrah is towards Allah and his Rasul is truly heading towards Allah and his Rasul. And whoever migrates towards the objects of the world, his hijrat is in the direction he has contemplated. If you are a man of intelligence and understanding, then contemplate. Contemplate the meaning of the statement of Rasulullah, namely, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fahijratuhu ila ma hajara ilayh. His hijrah is towards the object he has intended his migration. This hadith is proof for the aforementioned contention, this is the dalil and the proof of that. The meaning of the hadith is that whoever has left his homeland sincerely for the sake of Allah and his Rasul, his hijrat and migration is valid. On the other hand, if the purpose of the hijrah is worldly gain or a woman, then such a hijrat is for the world. It will have no share or gain in the Akira. In the same way, if the aim of the Salik, if the aim of his dhikr, shugl, ibadat, is the derivation of spiritual pleasure, or name, and fame, then this will be the limit of his attainment. He will not attain divine proximity. If he abandons everything, every single thing, and fixes his gaze on Allah Ta'ala, then this will be the maqsood he will attain. Matan, text, in the divine court, there is no act which is more acceptable than such an act which is out of the mind and which you regard as insignificant. Allahu Akbar. In the divine court, there is no act which is more acceptable than such an act which is out of the mind and which you regard as insignificant. What does this mean? The deed which has greater acceptance by Allah Ta'ala is an act which the servant, the banda, understands it to be from Allah. He discerns it with his heart and does not attribute it to himself. But viewing it with the heart's eyes, he says, if Allah Ta'ala does not wish that I render this deed, never will I be able to accomplish it. He should not regard this deed as being of such significance whereby he can gain divine proximity. On the contrary, he should consider it not worthy of acceptance in view of emanating from himself. Such a deed finds ready acceptance in the divine court, ready acceptance. Text. Do not be vain, do not be vain on account of acts of obedience. Laboring under the notion that such deeds are the effects of your willpower and choice. Allah has granted me willpower. Allah has given me choice. So you know what? Person gets pride now. So do not be vain on accounts of acts of obedience. Laboring under the notion that such deeds are the effects, the results of your willpower and choice. But you know what? Be happy thinking that you have been able to render the good. You have been able to render the good deeds solely on account of the mercy, the grace, and the ability granted by Allah Ta'ala. In this regard, Allah Ta'ala says, Say, it is by the grace and the decree of Allah. Thus be pleased with this. When the banda gives vent to exhilaration and he feels proud of his acts of worship, thinking that he has rendered these by virtue of his choice and will, then he will be guilty of displaying ingratitude. The happiness of the servant 
on account of having practice righteousness this happiness should be because he knows that he was able to render the deed by virtue of Allah's grace mercy and aid because someone once asked someone once asked me a question that you do something you do something you do something good some act of obedience or something nice and then people compliment you for it or they encourage you on and you, you, you do feel happy inside. So is this feeling of happiness wrong or is it what? This is the answer here. The happiness of the banda, the servant, on account of having practice righteousness, this happiness should be because he knows that he was able to render the deed by virtue of Allah's grace mercy and aid he thus expresses his shukr gratitude to allah ta'ala who had enabled him to execute the deed of virtue in this regard allah ta'ala commanded call say o muhammad say be pleased with only the grace and mercy of allah do not be pleased with something else when the banda deals in cash Regarding his acts of obedience, Allah does not respond with a credit reward. That is, he does not delay the reward until Qiyamah. So before we go to this text, it means that we now understand la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We are now understand that the af'al and the actions of man are makluka and created because Allah is al-fa'ilul haqiqi, the real do of everything so the happiness should be there but the person should feel happy that allah has enabled me to do this by his grace by his tawfiq by his mercy and not become not feel that this is deed is so significant i have done it by my will by my power by my choice next text when the banda deals in cash he deals in cash not talking about physical cash, not about the cash that per se, we want a cash jamaat, that kind of cash, cash jamaat. When the banda deals in cash regarding his acts of obedience, so he wants cash regarding his acts of obedience, he's dealing in cash. Allah Ta'ala does not respond with a credit reward. He does not respond with a credit reward. That is, he does not delay the reward until Qiyamah commentary of this it is not the alt it is not the attitude it is not the attitude of a generous person to extract work extract work and delay payment of the wages no 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 thus karim hakiki the one who is truly generous and magnificent and munificent jalla jalaluhu jalla shanuhu to a greater degree will not behave ungenerously he does not delay compensation for the banda's deeds until qiyama and then he will be repaid no he grants the reward for ta'at he grants the reward for obedience right here in this world the reward that he grants to the servant comprises of the sweetness of the heart the sweetness, the sweetness, the joy, the ecstasy, the heart tastes in ibadat and dhikr. al iman, such words. Man, man kunna fihi wajada bihinna halawa tal iman. This was referring to. So he grants the reward for ta'at right here in this world. The reward comprises of the sweetness. The sweetness the heart tastes in ibadat and dhikr and the variety of secrets, the variety of secrets, mysteries and subtleties which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows. He starts giving him it right here. In comparison to this reward, the banda regards the kingdom of the world as dust. So in comparison to this reward, 
he receives from Allah right here. Now the Banda regards the kingdom of the world as thus. So this is what is meant when the Banda deals in cash. He is dealing in cash means he's ready to do acts of obedience. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. He's he not dealing in credit. He deals in cash regarding his acts of obedience. Now, Al-An, now. Then Allah does not respond with a credit reward. He doesn't delay it until Qiyamah. No. He grants the reward for thought and obedience because he's better than any generous person who doesn't delay a reward. He grants the reward right here in this world. And the reward comprises of the sweetness. The sweetness, the heart taste in ibadat, in dhikr, the variety of secrets, mysteries, and subtleties which he bestows. In comparison to this reward, the world, the banda regards the kingdom of the world as thus. This immediate compensation, this cash compensation, is a very insignificant example of the reward he will receive in the Akira. This immediate compensation, Alhamdulillah, is a very insignificant example, say insignificant sample of the reward he will see, receive in the Akira. In the Akira, the reward will be much, much more, much, much more. This is just a small sample. Akirat, much more. The reality of the bestowals of the Akirat is beyond description. Beyond description. Next text, Matan. As a compensation in this world for acts of obedience, it is sufficient that your master has become pleased to consider you fit for ta'at. Wow. As a compensation and a jaza, in this world, for acts of obedience, you know what suffices for that compensation? It is sufficient that your master has become pleased to consider you fit for ta'at. He considers you fit for obedience. So he allows you to be obedient. This, and this alone is enough compensation. And that Allah takes work from you and kidmat from you and allows you to do Obedience, he considers you fit for obedience. Commentary. The, world we, the worldly reward for thought, obedience, is also limitless. Even the worldly reward for thought and obedience is also limitless. Among these, so plenty, plenty rewards right here. Among these rewards, the greatest reward for you the Salik is that Ahkamul Hakimin Allah Ta'ala, the King of Kings, the King of Kings has become pleased to choose you for rendering obedience. He has become pleased to choose you for rendering obedience. Rendering obedience to Him. He chose you. That should, that should be your greatest reward. For us, you, you are in fact nothing. Always remember that. You are in fact nothing, nothing, nothing. You are a contemptible slave and a pure non-entity. You are a non-entity. You don't exist. When a king in the world, a king in the world extracts some service from a man, some kidnap from a man, he feels proud of it because he has gained the rank. Whether he receives anything more is not of importance. The attainment of a rank in proximity to the king is adequate for him. When a king in the world extracts some service from a man, he feels proud of it because he has gained the rank. Whether he receives anything more is not of importance. The attainment of a rank in proximity to the king is adequate for him. So then what up if the king of kings takes service from you? Isn't that an adequate and best jaza? That he has chosen you for acts of obedience. 
He has chosen you to do kidmat. Whether they receive anything more or not, this should be enough for you. Because you are a non-entity, you are nothing. The matan, the ilhamat, inspirations, which descend on their hearts, and the opening up of the doors of the pleasure of dua, are adequate cash compensation for those who practice righteous deeds. Sometimes a person doesn't have the tawfiq to even make dua. Sometimes months passes by and he doesn't lift his hands in dua. So, the author is mentioning the ilhamat, the ilhamat, the inspirations which descend on their hearts, ilhamat, and the opening up, opening up of the doors of the pleasure of dua, opening up of the doors of the pleasure of dua, are adequate cash compensation for those who practice righteous deeds. Commentary. The bounties which are bestowed here in this world to those who practice virtue are the variety of inspirations, ilhamat, which cascade into their hearts from the divine court at the time of enacting righteousness. Allahu Akbar. And the akhirat, much more reward. But the bounties which are bestowed right here in this dunya to those who practice virtue, these bounties are the variety of inspirations, ilhamat, which cascade into their hearts from the divine court at the time of enacting righteousness. They experience spiritual pleasure from these ilhamat. Furthermore, vistas of the pleasure of dua, the pleasure of dua are opened in their hearts. The pleasure of dua are opened. The doors of the pleasure of dua are opened in their hearts. As a result of the bond of love which Allah Ta'ala bestows to them, the bounties of the world recede, recede, recede into oblivion, into oblivion, a state of nothingness. He who worships Allah, text Matan, he who worships Allah for the attainment of thawab, reward, or he worships Allah for salvation from adab, has not discharged the haq and the right of Allah's attributes of excellence, splendor, and grandeur. Meaning, commentary. If the banda's purpose, the servant's purpose, in rendering ibadat is the acquisition of jannah, I'm only doing ibadat because I want jannah, I want the hoors, I want this. If his purpose in rendering ibadah is the acquisition of jannah, and salvation from Jahannam, then inshallah he will achieve these goals. And these are lawful. Nothing is wrong. Inshallah he will achieve these goals. He will be saved from the hellfire. He will go into Jannah. That's good. Nothing is wrong with that. That is also good. Halal. Lawful. However, 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 he has desired personal pleasure by way of ibadat. He thus remains trapped in the web of the nafs. He has not discharged the right of Allah's lofty attributes. He has desired personal pleasure by way of ibadat because his ibadat is for personal pleasure to enjoy all the ecstasies and the bounties of Jannah, not to suffer that pain in Jahannam. And as I said, nothing is wrong with that. It's halal, it's good, and he will achieve it. But such a person remains trapped in the web of the nafs. He has not discharged the right of Allah's lofty attributes. The banda's attributes of excellence, the attributes of his excellence and kamal, is that his ibadat, his worship, should be purely for Allah's greatness and glory. 
that Allah deserves to be worshipped because He is Allah. Allah deserves to be worshipped because He is mustahiq of all ibadat. Allahu Akbar. Whether so had Jannat been not created or Jahannam not created, then Allah would not have been worshipped then. So from the, the servant's attributes of excellence and kamal is that his ibadat should be purely for Allah's greatness and glory. Not because, not because of the desire for Jannah. Not because of the desire for Jannah. Not because of the fear of Jahannam. But it should be purely for Allah's greatness and glory. The duty of the slave is to serve. The duty of the slave is to serve. Whether the master favors or rebuffs him, his duty of the slave is to serve, kidmat, serve. Whether the master favors him and bestow favors, or whether the master rebukes him and rebuffs him. We will continue next week, inshallah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu wa la ilaha ila anta nastagfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Social expectation drowns us all inside. What you have should be what I want. Cause what I have just ain't alright. The clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair. How I live, oh I don't care. This is who I am, this is me. Nothing, everything, just can't you see who I am? Just let me be, cause like it or not, but God loves me, who I am. He said, she said, they all.